What's up guys, it's Lefty here and I'm back with another video and in this one I'm going to be breaking down all three of the NFL Thursday Thanksgiving Day games. I got some bets I've made, opinions to discuss, some trends and angles I think that can be helpful. Uh, but before I hop into that, um, I have something important I want to say because the younger version of myself would want me to say this. Uh, most of you that have been watching my videos or following along the past few years know my story. Uh, I was a bookie from the age of 19 to my late 20s. Uh, then I went on to work pretty much every job imaginable in sports betting from sportsbook manager. Uh, I went into risk management, did some data analysis, and then um, even worked for some companies you've probably heard of. But I've been involved in sports betting for just over 20 years, and I was probably actually only present for maybe two or three Thanksgivings during that span of time, uh, one of them being last year. And when I say present, I mean actually there, like interacting with family and friends. A lot of times I'd just be there, but set up in some quiet room with the laptop and my phones. And then a lot of times I just didn't go to Thanksgiving um, gatherings or I had to work. Um, I regret a lot of those holidays missed. So I say that to say this, uh, there's always going to be more games uh, to bet, but these big holidays are much more important. So don't waste them worrying about some five leg parlay or, um, you know, staring at your phone. And I'm not saying don't bet, but just be present and involved. Um, and with that out of the way, let's get on to the games and try to find out which side is the right side in these games. In the first game up, we got Buffalo Detroit. This is going to be Buffalo's second game in Detroit in a little less than four days after playing the Browns here on Sunday because of the snow in Buffalo. So it's a little bit of an unusual scheduling spot that I think in a way actually benefits Buffalo. It definitely removes some of the home field advantage Detroit has. Um, not that they had much to begin with, but we have the highest total of the week on this game. It's been bet up from the look ahead line of 51 to now 54 and a half. And it's not even game day yet either. Uh, and that's where we'll see the majority of the public betting action that loves betting over. So it's possible we see it go higher. Uh, the Lions are a dead nuts over team and the Bills just scored 30 plus in the dome against a much better Browns defense, uh, at least compared to uh, the Lions. Now, the Lions offense seems to be back to where it was early in the season. They dealt with some injuries uh, to offensive skill position players starting back around week five, which uh, made them look a little out of sync offensively. And you can see it here clearly. Um, they went from averaging 35 points per game weeks one through four. And then the next four weeks, they scored zero points, six points. They got 27 points versus Miami and then 15 points versus Green Bay, averaging only 10 points during that span. And uh, now they've been getting some guys back uh, the last few weeks, starting to produce again. Uh, and they've got back-to-back 31-point -back games uh, versus the Bears last week. Um, or No, versus the Bears and then versus the Giants last week. But here's the problem. When you look at the opposing teams they've played, um, this one here versus the Bills is a giant step up in competition. Uh, it'll be the best all-around team they've played all season. And I like Buffalo here. It's a short flight for them uh, back to Detroit. But I feel like where the value comes in for Buffalo is the odds makers mispricing the home field advantage for Detroit, or um, I should say lack of home field advantage with Buffalo having just played there and how this team is almost suited better playing indoors on a fast track. Um, I think this Buffalo minus nine and a half is real short being uh, below double digits. I think by kickoff, it will be double digits. Uh, the line now is basically what it was versus Cleveland and Cleveland's a better all around team than Detroit and uh, Buffalo dominated them. The Browns scored late in that game last week to make that score look a little closer than it was. So it was a little misleading final score there. The game was completely one-sided. Um, I bet Buffalo minus nine and a half. And I know double digit favorites this season are only five and 11 against the spread. And the last nine double digit favorites have only covered the spread once. And I basically need Buffalo to win by double digits, but, and when you add in double digit road favorites, they're zero and four so far this year, but I'm really expecting Buffalo to dominate from start to finish. Um, this is a Detroit team that's allowing 6.4 yards per play on defense, which ranks dead last, and it's not even close. So hopefully I can get that win to start Thanksgiving off right. But moving on to the afternoon game, we have the Giants-Cowboys. 
got a divisional game here, and we actually have a quadruple D, a double-digit divisional dog. Uh, both teams coming into this game off the opposite end of a beatdown last week. Cowboys, of course, with an impressive beatdown on the Vikings, and then the Giants kind of finally showed a, a glimpse of who they really are by getting exposed by the Lions 31-18. Uh, no question this line of Dallas now at minus 10 with some minus nine and a halfs available. Are the sports books defending against all the Dallas action and blocking teasers with Dallas coming off such an impressive win? Uh, the odds makers know Dallas is going to be on everybody's teaser uh, list. Dallas was minus seven, moved right to nine and the right line's probably somewhere in the middle and that's probably the right number, but um, it's Thanksgiving. Everyone's going to have action on the game and recency bias will be in full effect here. Dallas coming off their best game of the year, beating Minnesota 40 to three. Um, and it really was a perfect spot for Dallas catching the Vikings off an emotional overtime win versus Buffalo classic letdown spot for Minnesota. Plus Dallas was looking to bounce back off the loss to green Bay just a perfect storm for Dallas. Um, Giants looked as bad as they could <clears throat> against the Detroit team last week. And I think that could have kind of been them looking ahead to this game. Plus the injuries for the Giants just continue to grow. Odds makers moving Dallas to uh, minus nine and a half on Tuesday. Now minus 10 at some books. Um, will at least make those teasers on Dallas a little less inviting. This total opened up around 43, and I immediately bet the over, knowing that this game um, will get heavy public involvement. <clears throat> and uh, we know the public loves betting overs, so wanted to kind of get out in front of it. And um, sure enough, we see the total currently at 45 and a half. I thought 43 was low, but it was definitely more of a, a numbers grab than a, a play that I handicapped as being an overplay. Uh, I worry a bit about the Giants' ability to score, or I should say score, or how quickly they can score. The Giants are going to do what they usually do, and that's run the ball. They rank second in rush attempts per game. And with the Giants now without wide receiver Wondell Robinson, uh, I'm sure, you know, um, they don't even have the option to really go to a heavy pass game script, even if they wanted to. We know the Dallas defense up front is solid, but um, they've given up a lot of yards on the ground. They rank 26, allowing 136 yards per game, 173 yards per game over the last three games and allowing 4.7 yards per carry. They're a good all around defense, uh, but they're built better against the pass and pressuring the QB than being a physical, you know, run stuffing defense. If they can't stop the run and the Giants control the clock, uh, Dallas covering double digits seems a lot harder. I'm expecting a busy day for Saquon Barkley, uh, Dallas stud linebacker, uh, Mika Parsons, he's banged up, but uh, he should play, but he'll definitely be less than 100%. Um, this is a tough game only because I feel like nine and a half is too many points. Uh, I feel like I have a good bet with the over 43, especially now with the total at 45 and a half. If you want my bets or opinions the second I make them, you can join the Betting Network Discord community. It's a sports betting educational Discord where I post and share all types of info. I have over 85 different betting lessons. Uh, we break down games in all sports, share systems, and, and much more. Link to join is in the description below this video. And you can DM me once you're in the Discord with any questions you have. Um, but, yeah, it, I mean, this game, it's hard to not like Dallas. Uh, the weapons at wide receiver and Dak slinging it around. Uh, when this Cowboys um, offense is on, it's as good as any uh, in the league. And then defensively, their front seven, how they can generate pressure. Um, they're obviously a tough team to try and come from behind against, even if it's, you know, just an obvious passing downs, um, you know. Uh, so if the Cowboys get out to a lead, it takes away the Giants' ability to run the ball, and that's when this could get ugly. Um, and the Giants' injuries, man, they just continue to mount. Um most recently with wide receiver Wondell Robinson now out for the season, a huge blow there. And now Giants cornerback Adoree Jackson, he's out four to six weeks and um, makes you think if um, the Giants defense couldn't do anything to stop the Lions, how are they going to stop a much better Cowboys offense? Um, I think CeeDee Lamb's going to have a big day now with uh, Giants cornerback Adoree Jackson out. Uh, who was all over him in the first time they played, uh, held uh, C.D. Lamb to just 57 yards and made some really big plays. Lamb's receiving props 
um, seem real low, 71, 72 as of now. But uh, I have to think that moves up into the high 70s. Um, also, I've been saying for weeks now, um, running back Pollard is a big upgrade uh, uh, from Zeke. You know, the Cowboys offense looks so much better when Pollard gets the bulk of carries. I don't know why there's even concern for Cowboys fans around the status of Zeke. Uh, if I'm them, I want him out and uh, Pollard as the featured back. Uh, but let's get into the Thanksgiving night game. Uh, Patriots, Vikings. This one is probably the toughest game for me. Anyone who's been following me or watching my videos for any length of time know I'm a lifelong Patriots fan. Um, growing up not far from the stadium, but I've also been betting sports for 20 years, and I think I do a good job at removing any hometown bias. But these two teams are difficult to uh, identify who they truly are. Uh, the Patriots are getting some respected money here. This line hit Minnesota minus three and immediately moved back to minus two and a half. Um, I thought for sure we'd see mini minus three across the board at all books by now. Uh, I'm curious if it has anything to do with Minnesota and how bad they looked last week. Um, you've got to think they bounce back here. But, uh, you know, the Patriots, they've won five of their last six games, but it's tough to upgrade them when you look at who they beat. You know, starting with a banged up Lions team uh, who had no skill position players at the time, then a Browns team with former Patriots backup quarterback Jacoby uh, Brissett, who Bill Belichick knew very well. Uh, then they lost to the Bears with Justin Fields, um, who looked like basically Michael Vick and ran all over them. Uh, then it was the Jets two times with Zach Wilson, who Bill Belichick just completely owns. Uh, then they beat a Sam Ellinger-led Colts team. That was uh, in the midst of all types of issues there. So this is going to be a big step up in quality of opponent here for the Patriots. But uh, like I said, you know, the market has definitely shown some Patriot support when um, the Vikings moved to three. It just got bet right back down quickly. And when you start to think about the Vikings versus the Patriots defense, um, Patriots defense are rated number one in DVOA or uh, defensive value over adjusted. Uh, and that's uh, adjusted based on the strength of an opponent, too. So. Patriots are also number one in defensive EPA or expected points added. Both are advanced metrics that are trusted and used by many high-level bettors. Um, the Minnesota defense ranks 30th in opponents' uh, yards per play. Uh, both teams have key injuries now on offensive line, uh, which I think benefits the better defense. Patriots' um, David Andrews starting center, he's likely to miss. And then left tackle for the Vikings looks like he's going to miss. Uh, and the Patriots are great at exploiting uh, weaknesses and game planning for things like this. Uh, so I'm playing the Patriots here teased with an open spot. I'm going to find a team to close it with, but I'm getting the Patriots up through the key numbers of three and seven in a game with a low total, which means points are always more valuable. Um, the Vikings don't win games by margin. If you look at all their wins, um, seven of their eight wins are by eight points or less. Uh, Vikings couldn't have looked worse versus Dallas last week. So you have to expect a bounce back. But Patriots winning an ugly game last week with a walk-off punt return, those type of wins can be big motivation builders too. Um, Patriots with much better defense, getting points. I like this spot. Um, Dallas was able to get to Cousins and sack him seven times last week. I think the Patriots uh, can put similar pressure on him with their edge rushers. Plus, the latest Vikings injury report shows both cornerbacks, Andrew Bo uh, Andrew Booth and then uh, uh, Kaleeb uh, Evans, both out. So um, that's a big blow to their secondary there. And, um, you know, I don't care about, uh, you know, some of these trends that favor the Vikings. And, um, you know, a big reason why I like dislike trends um, in general is because uh, you can find trends to fit any narrative you want. Um, I keep seeing Kirk Cousins. Um, he's the most profitable quarterback coming off a straight up loss. He's 33 and 17 since 2015. Uh, so that's great. If you're backing uh, the Vikings, you'll, you'll want to use that stat, um, but uh, you won't want to use any trends about him being the second least qu um, profitable quarterback playing at night or in primetime games. So um, yeah, you know, trends can go uh, either way. I tend to just not uh, put any, uh, value or weigh them 
But, um, yeah, to wrap this video up, so as of now, I have Buffalo minus 9.5. I think they run away with this one. I have the over 43 Giants-Dallas, which just seems too low, and uh, bet it more as a numbers grab. And I was right because the line's up to 45.5 now. So have closing line value there, which is always something that makes me feel good. And then lastly for the night game, I have the Patriots teased with an open spot. So I got them plus 8.5 which I think is a good number with such a low total and points being hard to come by. Um, and yeah, like I said, the Vikings, they've only won one game by more than eight points. And uh, that was week one versus Green Bay. Um, so that's what I got here for Turkey Day. Um, I'll likely have more props and maybe some other official plays. All of them will be posted in the Betting Network Discord community. Again, link to join is in the description below this video, but that's gonna do it for me on this one. I appreciate anyone who watched. Hope I earned a thumbs up or a comment, or maybe even subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate it very much. But uh, more importantly, hope everyone has a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Don't be on your phone all day. Play with your younger cousins or nieces and nephews or ask your older relatives about how their day was. You know, uh, basically all the things I wish I did during the holidays. But good luck with whoever you bet. Hope you sweep the board. And as always, may all the refs calls and all the loose balls go your way.